Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. This is a B-Twin bike, a Hop Rider 300. It's extra large. A neighbor gave it to me a few days ago. The back wheel on it is really bad, and I'll show you that in close up and spin it round. Bearings, free wheel. He said, he told me the free wheel isn't engaging, but I've since identified that the bearings are knackered on it. Back brakes are loose, front brakes are just awful. Um, nothing in them at all, and I think it needs new pads. And this uh, headlamp, it's got a dynamo hub, but the headlamp's broken off. So I'm going to have a go at it and see, just see what's in the back wheel, because I think it's a nice bike. It's about five years old or something. I think it's 2015, six years old. So I think it'd be a nice bike. I think I could ride it. Or, well, I don't particularly need it, but uh, I don't like seeing things not being fixed. So I'm going to see if I can fix that back wheel. So have a look at, have a look at how bad it is here. It's a really nice bike, but uh, the back wheel's dead. You can hear that noise. It's uh, the free wheel is not engaging. The bearings are, I think, pooched on that side as well. You can see there. So I'll take it apart and have a look at it. The rim, you see, is running true, which is kind of frustrating, or as good as true, anyways. I'll take it apart and see what's in there. With it off, it might not be that bad. It's definitely got bad bearings. But they're not that bad, and this freewheel is definitely chundered up. Now the bearings in the freewheel are dead, so it's it's engaging there. But like, look at that. That's not great. So I'll take it off. I should just be able to pull it off, and then I can have a look at the bearings underneath. So get the someone's playing a harmonica outside by the sounds of things. I'll get it off, and we'll have a go. So I've got my freewheel tool up here and the vice. The vice just makes it easier and I've got the nut taken off the back of that axle. We'll see if we can get this freewheel off. It should, should come off now. Um, tight that way. I'm going to pull this one this way. Okay. There we go. That was easy. Spin it. And there, once it starts clicking, it'll sit off the thread. Lift it up and we're out. Let's get into the bearings. In another world, people would try and fix this, but uh, I don't live in that parallel universe of the past. That thing's just dead. But you know what? I'm just wondering if I can get a C spanner in here to try and. You can take freewheels apart. This is a seven speed, and I've got some spare freewheels, you see, so I'm wondering if I can. How would you do that? It has two little um, eyes, eyes there, and you have to get a spanner on them. Sunrun. See, it is engaging eventually. But not, just not right. Oh man, it sounds rough. Now, if you were going to tighten that. You normally tighten it that way. It means I should loosen it this way, but I don't know. Sometimes these things have. <laughs> Left hand threads. I do not know. Let's try it the other way and see what happens. It's jumping out there. go that's it loose <sighs> anyone else would have cleaned it first not me sun run haven't opened a freewheel in years yep it's a load of bone dry ball bearings in there you can see now if I lift this up a load more might fall out the bottom put my hand in yeah there they are Whoa. And so those bearings are bad. The bearing race is all chundered up on that side in there. So one half's bone dry, the other half's put my hand down here. The other half's rotten. 
And because of that, I'm guessing that's it's not that it wasn't springing out. It just wasn't. Uh, so those are the poles there that catch on the freewheel. They just spring out like that and catch on this ratcheted internal here, which looks pretty healthy, but it's this bearing race. I'll clean it up and show you. I'm pretty sure it's completely a dud. So look at the good side over here. This is the outside. You see that shiny ring? just in there where the ball bearings were flowing freely and it's just nice and smooth contrast to this side which is all burred out and gross so we're looking just just there between my two gloves it's all pitted and rough and it's just dead that's it nothing to do well it looks like there's another ring here i'm just going to take it apart for fun the two foot stilson Takes no prisoners. If this doesn't grip it, nothing will. There we go. Should have just started with that. What a beast. Big tools sometimes are the answer. Still is a wonderful thing. Let's see. Still can't chase it off. You could probably get a grips on there, like a, a plumber's wrench or something like that. Instead of, you know, I didn't need the leverage of the two foot one. And I have a three foot one as well for really stubborn pipes. But uh, there we go. I just don't think I've ever taken one of these apart this far. We okay. So that's the cassette that goes inside. So on modern wheels, not modern, but some wheels, this is part of the wheel, not in this case. So there's your set of plastic spacers and cogs. Kind of neat. It's just going in the scrap bin, you know, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, filthy. It's always difficult when the video maker refuses to use like a white background or something. You've got to faff around trying to deal with things and watch a video and this guy just can't go over to a white wall to do this stuff, but whatever. Just not interested, sorry. I'll clean up that thread a little bit. I really need to wire brush it, I think. To get this to slide off easy. both sides are actually loose so the lock nuts weren't locked up which means that the bearings probably just fell loose quite easy there's a spacer there's there's grease on that side i wonder if these aren't actually that bad let's get in let's clean it up let's have a look we can always put it back together again and hopefully i have a seven speed freewheel if not i can always order one but it just seems a bit it's a bit useless putting a new one because they don't they tend to marry up to the chain that they've got. The grease doesn't look too bad, you know. The balls look pretty clean. Yeah, it looks pretty good. This one can be saved. Those um, those bearing cups look okay in there. This cheap old wheel, like it's a B twin bike, which is not famous, but that looks pretty good on that side. Let's see what the other side. The grease was a bit of a different color, so yeah, it looks pretty good to some of the bikes I've taken asunder and put back together over the years. OK, 
looks pretty good, you know. Yep, I'm pretty happy with that. I think we can save that wheel, which is great. I hate, really hate it. Really hate throwing stuff like this out. So let's just get that lock nut back on there and tighten it up where it was. It was about there. Any small difference won't make much of a difference there. I'll tighten those two together. Oh, bollocks. Okay, so that side has crap. So I'll need a new cone on it. Hopefully I've got an axle or something that'll do it. It's weird. Well, it's not. It's great that the cups didn't take it and the cones did because it's far easier. You can pull the cu cups out, but I've never pressed in new ones and it's not a job I think anyone would bother with, giving every given everything I've just said. See what the other side is like. Yeah, that one. That one's really pitted. Let's have another look at it now. So it should be like that. Well, even better than that. And then it looks like this. You can see that. Like you can see the holes in it. So it's probably been a bit of water in there or something, causing it to rust. Maybe. Let's have a look at this side. This one looks okay. Yeah, that one looks fine. So. Good and shiny on the surface the whole way around. So it could be that half the ball bearings are dead as well. Mind your fingers on those because sometimes those lips are pretty sharp. I'm wearing plastic gloves but I've cut through them just as quick as skin. There's no protection. It's, it's good protection from oil but not from anything beyond oil. Right, so I'll go fishing and see if I've got parts. So this is a different system, it's a front wheel. Just pulled apart and it was a bit clunky, but uh, it's a different type of bearing. They're in a kind of little cage, which I kind of prefer. They all look okay. Seven bearings, I think, in a cage rather than just a load of loose ones. Let's see if they fit with the good bearing, so that's the bad bearing. There's a good one, and they should go like that. So let's put it into the old wheel, or not the old wheel, but the wheel that we're testing here. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so the cone from this these bearings will work, and I need some new bearings anyways, so that's cool. So let's tidy everything up and start reassembly. So I thought this was going to be easy and I thought the bearings, you know, that I had there would do it. And then I looked at the cones for them. That one's dead. You can see like it's it's OK if it's got that polished ring in the black, but those pits are just all the way. And it's on both of them. This one's not as bad, but it still has pits. So there's no point in putting that one in. That was the good one. So I'll keep that one. Took this one off another wheel. It's dead too. And I checked another one. Where is it? There. It's just rotten like. It's just big pits in it. You can see them. That one's not even clean and you can see them. So I'm going on to a fourth axle now. And uh, I'll get there. This one's... Got one of those cages in it, but the bearings are loose. I'm gonna get another box and have a look. So another one, let's have a look at this. If it would focus, we would see there's two pits in it. Come on, massive box. And the bearings and that are falling apart. That doesn't matter so much, but uh, let's check the other side. There's a tiny pit in that one. Let's just check if it's not dirt. I think it's a pit, but I'm running out of used parts. I've got one good back wheel outside for a 26 inch mountain bike. Uh, it's pitted as well. That too is pitted, come on. Yeah, 
That's the best one, but best is useless if it's not right. Erg. What am I going to do? I don't know. I don't know either. What am I going to do? I don't know. We don't know about this. Like we can choose the best of a bad bunch, but that's a bad idea. I even found a free... I even found a free wheel. I guess I'll have to keep looking. Yeah, look at that one. They're all just crazy. So hopefully I'm going to move on to reassembly now. I took this off. This is the spoke protector. When I took it off, what happened? A spoke fell out. So one of the spokes now has a piece of wire. There it is wrapped around it. I've replaced this one uh, over here. That's my bucket of spare spokes and spoke nipples. Uh, it's not really part of this video, I guess, but uh, just to say that with the best of intentions, the end. So just to say that with the best of intentions, you still end up having another five jobs to do. So let's see. That's the old spoke there. The head had just fallen off it, and that's that. I managed to replace it without having to take the iron tube off because the nipple stayed in place and it was you know this bike is five years old it was relatively new so it just unscrewed no 2015 six years old now let's go back to rebuilding this what do i need to do first we need oh for before i rebuild i want to show you a selection of bearings cups and cones on the workbench now let's see, this is the one that came off the bike, here. And so this one's all pitted. And this other side is okay. We started with that, remember? And I thought, easy peasy. Then, I started looking, and almost all of the bearings that I have, from good and bad, like here's a white, a white hub. The uh, cups on it, Pitted. No, the cones even, I should call them. Badly pitted. So that's the white one. Put it out of the way, somewhere that it can fall over. And I looked at other ones, like this one. From a mountain bike, I think. Like, you can tell that, well, it's had a bit of use, but those are just massive pits. Again, this one here. Pitted. So you can see there's a theme emerging, pitted. I'm going to throw all of them out, obviously. Badly pitted the whole way around. Pitted. <laughs> so that's five so far. But I found one wheel on an old 24-inch mountain bike that was not so badly pitted. It was not pitted at all, in fact. Hopefully it's this one. Yeah. I'm happy to use that one, and I've got another spare here. Now, they're slightly longer, so in theory I would need to put a shorter spacer in. Like this. So I'm going to have to do that as well. So let's unscrew this. And the spacer side is the gear side. So that makes it easier on these. Although the front side should just be symmetrical, so there's no real complication in it. I'm going to need to get some grease as well. I looked these up on the internet and I couldn't find what I was looking for easily. Like, they want to sell you a whole wheel. That's badly pitted, hey? The other thing I wanted to show you was one of the bearings. I cleaned all the bearings in this cup here. And one of them, I, I think I, well, I, I tried to look at all of them, but, you know, I'm not using a microscope. But look at that. So that's, it's meant to look like this, shiny. But over on this side, you can see it's just completely pitted. So I'll put that with my scrap. And I might as well put this one back on this side. It makes no difference, really. What's this one here? There's another one that's off a really kind of, like, flashy-looking bike. Pitted. Sorry, there's a theme emerging. I just spent so long doing it, I want to show you what I was doing. I was at it for about an hour, you know. It's like, this should be an easy job, just swap the bearings out. But it took ages to take these things apart. Because I had to go through my wheels, look for a wheel that I didn't want. You know, I don't want to... I had a good rear mountain bike wheel, but it's the back wheel that always tends to go on a bike, in my experience, and be difficult to replace. So, oh dear, no, no, I'm doing it wrong. 
So if I'm going to put that one on there, I need that spacer. I'm doing it wrong. I've got to put the other one on with the shorter spacer. Arr, fast forward. I had enough of doing it by hand. You just have to be careful because that will catch on your fingies. So that's one side done. Now I have to tighten that up. So spanners. Now you want to cinch this one down good and tight. Against itself, against that locking ring. And this probably this this step wasn't probably done in the factory properly. And that's why it came loose. Simple as that. Let's get some grease. Tin of just multi-purpose grease. I'm not too fussy about these things. And let's put a smear in on each side. There's no such thing in an application like this as too much grease. Like, it really just really doesn't matter. You just, the only point you don't want is that the grease is bulging out the outside, but bearings don't mind. But like, you don't need very much either. I'm putting in, I probably am putting in too much, whatever you want to say. But uh, the grease will attract dust, and that's a bad thing, perhaps. But it also prevents rust, just by virtue of the fact that it should keep water out a bit. I put a little bit of grease on the threads of that... Um, not, not that much, come on. I'll put a little bit of grease on the threads of that freewheel as well. So I'm going to use the bearings that came out of the good new cones because there was one pitted one, the other ones could be like micro pitted if that makes sense. So offer these in, just push them in. With that much grease, you don't really need any more. What's in there is enough. So I'll push the axle through on this side. Just check it there. Seems okay, not really checking for anything in particular. And then on the other side, let's put this other cone on. And using those little cassette bearings, not cassette bearings, but whatever you call them, you know, cartridges, they're not cartridges either really. They, um, the bearings don't fall out as quickly because they're all held in the ca caged bearings maybe. Because they're all held in the cage, they don't fall out, which makes life a little bit easier. So these um, pieces of metal on the outside of the cones, if I have another one, I'll show you what I mean. These metal flanges, they're just pressed on, so you can move them in and out with a hammer or a more fancy press. They're just for dust, to keep some of the dust out, but they don't, like, they're not waterproofing or anything like that. So tighten it up until it spins freely, and then just lock it up with the locking spanner. Feels pretty sweet. No play, end to end, in and out, up and down. Just running smooth. So then let's put this back on. It's just held on by the freewheel. So here is a spare freewheel that I happen to have. It's a Shimano. It's a little bit worn, but not much. Definitely better than the old one. There is an issue that the chain might skip on this one because it won't be quite right, but it's a risk we'll just have to take. Now, it's not in correctly. <laughs> and I can't get it off. So I've got the nut on here again. What's really going on? I've put it on so sideways that I can't even get the nut on it. How am I going to get this off? That was a real fool move, but this is reality, so... I haven't tightened it, so it's not even... it's just loose sitting there, but it's misthreaded. That's it. It's only tiny, tiny, tiny tap needed. 
to get it off. So what I would have said was, right, take this and then you need to kind of spin it backwards until you think it's right and then spin it forwards and align it properly. How tight do you want to tighten this? The chain, it doesn't matter because the chain is going to tighten it automatically once you start pedaling. Right. That's peculiar. Why have my bearings tightened up? So with the free wheel on, the bearings have tightened, which is quite bizarre. Hmm. I know what it is. I know what that is. Okay, I'll show you. Back over this side, back with my free wheel removal tool. Let's remove that free wheel. I think I know what's wrong. And if you can guess, you get a point. There we go. So that dust cover that I mentioned earlier on here is too far out. So I'm gonna have to tap that in somehow. Yeah, so I think there's just friction on this because it spins fine. So I've just got a blunt chisel. Just gonna work that down. That's it, that's in. And that should do it, I'm hoping. So now my axle spins freely, put the cover back on, line this up correctly if I can. There we go. And we're spinning just fine. Let's tighten up a bit more. Perfect, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so let's put it back in the bike. Lift that chain up, click that around. So I noticed when I was editing that I left out this little spacer here in the middle and that was why it was uh, springing a bit on the frame as I thought. I thought the frame was a bit wide. No, I forgot that spacer and I put it in the scrap bin and now I've taken it out and I've put it back together again. So I've got it all, so I've got it all back together and uh, I'll put it all back together again. And so after all of that messing with the wheel and everything else, I tightened up the back brakes and I put new pads on the front brakes, I have to remember what I did there, and tightened them up a little bit and adjusted the gears, but this um, shifter, the rubber has come off the, uh, you can see it there, the rubber's come off the inside, so it's not working right, oh the steering was loose here as well, so I tightened that up haven't fixed this yet but it rides really sweet and so that's excellent so the lower things are you know small and getting a new shifter on there it's not the end of the world here I am in my car it's not the end of the world um, new headlamp it should be an easy bolt on I presume the hub works I presume that just took a clatter somewhere but yeah excellent working sweet questions or comments you know what to do thanks for watching see you later